Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It's June 25th, 2014, and I feel summer finally coming on. Um, you guys who have been off school for a long time, you know, whatever. But uh, tomorrow's my last day of school. <laughs> so the weights are beginning to lift. But um, but we hold good cherries here. But we ha have invited um, anybody from CL MOOC to join us, and Chris Sloan is going to talk to us a little bit of what he's going to do this summer, I hope, and uh, we all can. Um, so that's our that's our theme tonight. Uh, what are you doing this summer, and or whatever else comes up here? Um, so why don't we uh, introduce people? Um, Vanessa, do you want to introduce yourself, and then we'll just kind of go around. Okay, um, I'm um, in Seattle, Mook, and. Okay. Uh, I live in Mountain Air, New Mexico, uh, and I'm in, involved with a fair amount of, of, of education stuff, but not really officially teaching other than, say, what you might call border, local stealth outreach. Local what outreach? Stealth. Stealth? Yes, I, I, I do. It's sort of under the radar educating locally. Okay. Sort of continuing education. And um, I have, um, I, I've got a, um, um, several blogs that's, no, I'm like Imelda Marcos. I don't want to admit how many shoes I have. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, I do high, higher ed, higher ed um, advocacy blogging. All right. So, great. Welcome. Sherry, so nice to have you on. Um, yeah, it's been a while, but I was home and saw your message, so here I am. I'm Sherry Edwards. I uh, teach at the Spielum School, North Central Washington State, so middle school, 6th, 7th, and 8th language arts. That's me. And and it's so, I, don't, I don't know if this is your job or not, but you're, you're like um, a great responder on CLMU. That, that is my job, but it's that what I like to do anyway, so I think that's why they asked me. Okay. No, they, no, said last, was, they said what? Last year I had jumped in and was doing all of that just as a participant, so they said they, come and do it this year. <laughs> I said, okay. Oh, great. So we're going to entice you back onto Youth Voices as soon as we can here, too. Okay, <laughs> great. Yeah, good. And Karen, welcome. Hi, everybody. I'm Karen. <laughs> Karen, you're nice in the dark place. Nice to see you. Sort of. <laughs> I am in a dark place today. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, anyhow. Welcome. Karen, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? I'm um, sure. I'm Karen Fastenpower. Um, I am. Uh, I live in Arizona, part of the Borderlands Writing Project, and I am helping out with Seal MOOC this year, mostly working on the Make Bank stuff. Okay. And Vanessa's going to add to the Make Bank, right? Yay. Yeah, she. I was doing some, working on something that I wasn't thinking of as being a make. So Jerry said, "Oh, make a make what out." Do you of think? <laughs> So it's like okay, if 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 you can make it, if you can make it, you can you can bank it or something like that, or exactly, <laughs> or it's a it, it, it's it's a it's a make if you can make it. So what's what's the um oh I don't know, it's quick introduction to CL MOOC. What is CL MOOC? If somebody's just listening to this the first time, and, and where do they hook up? Who wants to try that? Yeah, Sherry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Vanessa. It's hard to describe. It's fun. It, it, it's really different from almost any other kind of MOOC that you're going to take. Uh, they're very hospitable. Then they'll be just telling you to make things, and even if you don't make them well, they'll you know they'll they'll be really make you feel good about it. <laughs> That's a good description it's, it's, so far. So there are make cycles. They happen once a week. Is that correct? Um, they happen once a week, but you can do them whenever you want. So right. it's very flexible. And are they being managed by different groups within the National Writing Project this year, or how is that working? 
We have. I, I could have done some research, but. <laughs> yeah, we have make cycle leaders that are from different writing projects around the country. So, Boise, Northern California, um, are the two I think that have gone so far, and different groups leading each make cycle. You've got more people helping this year than last. We sure do, and we are so happy about that. Last year, it was. Um, it seemed. Yeah, it seemed like a big team to me last year because I've done ones that just had a couple people. But this year, it's it's even um, more spread out, which is really great. And it's been really fun to have some um, people like, I think, both of you, um, Sherry and Vanessa, who were involved last year who are now um, reengaging and stepping up into different roles. And that's, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. cool. It stands for Connected Learning. Massive open online collaboration because that's its focus is connecting and collaboration. And so we always want to encourage people to do what they can, when they can, and connect with others and work together. So, so even though we encourage, we always ask questions too in the conversation. Those are, are starting to how does this connect to learning and what does this mean for your classroom or your spot wherever you are because not everybody is an educator in it. Well, I found it at first last year just a little bit confusing connecting connecting all the, the non-writing projects to writing because coming from the, the basically the higher ed more you know sort of I've, ta I've taught composition and it's like well they don't let us do fun things like that in college composition classes. <laughs> uh, but although I have a feeling that Terry might be an ex exception to that. See Terry he's a uh, operates the writing, he manages, runs whatever, a writing center uh, at a, in, in Kentucky, I think, college right. there. And Karen, are you, are you K-12 or are you higher ed? I'm K-12, but I'm kind of more in informal spaces these days. But I'll tell you another example of a college that's used this stuff is um, Stephanie West Puckett last year was one of our co-facilitators, and they actually did they created a category in the Make Bank for first-year composition students and really branched out the kind of stuff that they were doing into more multimedia. I'm not teaching, yeah. I'm not teaching composition anymore, uh, but it uh, be interesting. Although I ended up, I realized that, that when I was uh, in graduate school and they weren't really paying much attention to me as long as I ordered the right books, that I did a lot of this stuff in my classes because I had spent a long time outside of the academy. And mm -hmm. if if something made more sense to do it a different way, or they or the students said, couldn't we do such and such? And I'd think about it, and I go, why not? Uh, and uh, it worked out very well. And they actually ended up actually is one time one time well, we thought this would be less work, but we had to think more about what we've been reading. For That's someone me. who doesn't know, like where would you find this Make Bank? Right, so um, the main site for CL MOOC, it's a project of the Educator Innovator group, um, and if you're not familiar with that, it's at educatorinnovator.org, um, and the, the main link for CL MOOC is clmooc.educatorinnovator.org, and on that there's a link to the Make Bank, there's a link to um, the the make cycle newsletters there's a place where you can sign up by email which sort of gets you signed up for the collaboration and getting emails we have a blog hub and it's kind of a um, because it's a really open MOOC and and really focused on making connections there's a lot of different spaces where people are interacting so there's a G plus community there's a lot of people on Twitter and we kind of, and there's people doing things on their own blogs and people doing things in other spaces. And we really just encourage people to like do, you know, find what makes sense to you and don't feel like you have to do everything. But definitely the um, CLMOOC.EducatorInnovator is the main link. And I'll pop that over in the other room as well. Okay, and, and Sherry so, put, typed in the link over on the ch uh, chat. Yeah. Um, and there might be a chat going on also at edtechtalk.com slash ttt. So if we can get that there too, it'd be great. The um, I I wanted one of the things that um, I said this show was going to be about is summer, right? And um, so, can you say just a quick word about why Seal Mook works in the summertime? Because it consumes you. 
<laughs> you would I wouldn't have time to do this in the summer. <laughs> Once you get involved in the in a project, um, you just want to finish it. You just want to keep going. So you pick a time when you have a few minutes and you just go with it. It's just so much fun. But I there's no way I could do this during the school year. Well, I love how Vanessa started her description of it saying it's a lot of fun because that's yep. something we tried really intentionally to design into this. And I think, you know, I think the maker stuff really lends itself to fun. But I think in the summer, you know, it seems like everybody's school years are pushing late and starting early. And in the summer, it's like you need to recharge and take a break. You need a break. Yeah. Um, and we well, hope this I, is part of that. When it started, I was like, I was like, what's going on here? Just not sure quite what I'm supposed to be doing or where I'm supposed to, you know, it's sort of like what and it, then it was like oh whatever you want wherever you want whatever you want uh, actually I have a rather what I found was a rather charming uh, retail 14 CL moot story um, I was over on um, with the uh, Jeff Lebeau's um, I have a question hangouts and Dave Cormier mm -hmm. was, was talking. They said, "Well, tell us about the retail 14." And he says, "Oh, he says all sorts of things are happening all over the place." He says that I hadn't planned. He says, "For example, he says there, the, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, came all these people doing images and graphics and mixed media things, <laughs> and I don't know where that came from." And I'm thinking, "Oh, that's that's Kevin and Terry." <laughs> yeah. uh, so you get a lot of cross pollination. From one to another. Mm -hmm. And how long does the CL MOOC go on? It ends in end of July. July. End of July. Yeah. So that's going to be eight weeks, six weeks, something like that. Is that right? I think it's seven. seven? And I okay. see um, Christina's in the chat room, and she's reminding us all the groups that are doing Make Cycles: um, Keene University Writing Project, Hudson Valley, Maker John in Philadelphia, as well as the ones that I mentioned. So that's all happening, and that'll keep um, going on here. I, I wanted, I invited Joe and Chris to come talk about what you guys are doing this summer a little bit, and to see if we could do a little further planning around um, some of the ideas that cropped up two weeks ago around making MOOCs, learning from CO MOOC and other things, toward doing something for Youth Voices. Because if we don't keep talking about that. Chris Sloan's classes start, I think, in two weeks, right? I'm sorry, <laughs> your actual student. No, Chris Sloan's classes start in mid-August, so I always oh, like man. to um, think about that. But one of the things we said is that wouldn't it be interesting if we could get a – we, we ended up kind of being pairs and um, creating some sort of MOOC. Um, but Chris – there's, so there's that to get to if we can a little bit, if we can mix these conversations. Um, and uh, But do you want to talk a little bit about what you're doing kind of immediately? Though? Sure. You know, we never actually finish introductions. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> so, Who is next? <laughs> well, Joe hasn't introduced herself, and then maybe I'll... I'll go. go ahead, Joe. Yep. And what are you doing this summer? Oh, what am I doing? Um, let's see, Joe Buddies. My daughter's going to dip in and out of this conversation. Oh, please. So we're going to have to share the space here. Um, Joe, uh, from Oakland, and my summer is a lot of teacher training. I get the, the blessing of being able to work with um, some of the younger teachers at my site that are coming into their first years and kind of, I don't know what the good word is to use for what's about to happen to them. Indoctrination, uh, I don't know, manipulation, yeah. I don't know, all the positives <laughs> that happen to first years. So you're, so. You're, the, you're the teacher trainer? Yeah, I get to do a lot of the tech stuff at school, and, and I feel like, well, I don't know, we're freaking out, but I'm freaking out, slightly, but um, yeah, have that's my summer. With, have you worked that way with teachers before? Or is this yeah, new? I have. Oh, you have, okay. No, I have. So, you, so you're working with brand new teachers, or I'm new working teachers? with brand new teachers. I have two more coming into my department, um, and two shifting, working with completely different language populations. So there's just a lot of support, I guess, needed. I guess so no, that is how, needed. How often do you get to meet with them and stuff, or how does it work? So we're utilizing the online, being able to, so taking Google Hangout and being able to meet together. So that's actually becoming pretty standard now for our school, which is cool. 
Um, and I've been meeting every day since school let out uh, in different collaborations. And uh, but the brunt of it will happen in a couple of weeks, which is why to have this conversation because a lot of our teachers have done that idea for one of you know so like a smaller or MOOC for the kiddos and a cycle like we were talking about would be really interesting for some of these teachers to try in their in their seminar classes. You want to say hi? Do you want to say hi? Hi. Mommy, how am I going to say water? She can talk. She she's, talk she's asking me to spell something. What do you want oh. to spell? All right. Keep going, everyone. Sorry. That's <laughs> okay. So, Chris, jump in with what you're doing. Yeah. You're working so with my, teachers, too, right? Yeah. Go ahead. I do. Yeah. So, my name is Chris Sloan. I teach... Uh, high school English and media and photography at Judge Memorial. It's in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, so I'm going to be working with uh, teachers this summer too. Um, tomorrow I go to Ireland and um, I work with um, the Michigan State University has an overseas cohort, uh, which would be, um, you know, like international teachers and teachers also in the U.S who are trying to get their masters in educational technology. So I teach the first three courses of that. Um, and so that's where I'm headed here shortly. All, all three courses in, in the summertime? In one or? month, yeah. It's just like, you know, full okay. on. Um, you just live, sleep, breathe, eat it. Uh, you know, it's just uh, full time stuff. But it's good times, you know. And uh, so, yeah, I, uh, like Joe, I'm working with teachers, and, and you know, it's just a, so much fun. Uh, I think working with students is a lot of fun, too. But it's a different kind of fun with uh, adults and, and people who can impact all those students from, you know, all these different places. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and also, you know, to kind of tie back to the CL MOOC, um, one of the courses is... Um, uh, it's about like mm, involves making and things like that. So, um, yeah. So, um, so why don't you keep going there? Next week we're gonna have mm -hmm. our the guest yeah. visitors next week, right? Yeah. July second. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, um, one of the books that we're reading is Invent to Learn by Gary Steger and Sylvia Martinez, and so. Um, we contacted Gary and Sylvia, and Sylvia for sure will join us next week. Um, she's getting back from ISTE, and then um, she's pretty sure she'll be here next week. Um, and then Gary, perhaps, too. So they want to... Um, I, I thought that was kind of curious how their, their book... I don't know if anyone's read that, but um, they do a really nice job of tying educational uh, theory and the big names into kind of this maker movement. So, you know, they they have people, uh, not even the earliest, but the people who stand out, you know, John Dewey, um, uh, who, who Seymour Papert says, you know, basically was just ahead of his time um, as far as, like, the making movement goes. Um, and so, and the, the book also relies a lot on Seymour Papert and his great work. Um, but I really like how they tie it to um, educational theory and educational psychology. And then they have some pretty practical, good practical advice for people uh, to intentionally bring this making movement into the classroom. So that's July 2nd. We'll just talk with the authors. And then July 16th, when I'm over in Ireland, um, one of the people we collaborate with is um, there's a group called... Um, 091 Labs in Galway, Ireland, and um, uh, I guess I could put a link to them. Um, but they're a maker space, and so we, um, last year we connected with them and just kind of, you know, talked about making and and uh, had some good chats. Um, this year we want to perhaps um, do like a little maker fair with them for the local Irish families. Um, so we're working on that, but anyway, some of them will be with us on July 16th 
um, but you know there's a time difference, and so um, you know this time so right it ends now. So it's be one o'clock Eastern here in the United States. Right, because you know this time right now is two thirty a.m. in Ireland. <laughs> And that's kind of a stretch to ask people to join us then. Yeah, so yeah it's going to be, be uh, 10, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Ireland time. Uh, yeah. And we'll be talking with some of the people at the Makerspace and then also just some of these teachers um, from around the world who've kind of tried to bring some of this making physically and, and maybe theoretically into their classroom. So that's good times. Yep. So you've you've already brought some making into your classroom, right? Sure. I mean, in your yeah. media class and your photography class, I think. Right? Yeah, especially those. Um, uh, like in my photography class, um, they you know they take a lot of photos, but then um, around Chris, well, the holidays or. Mother's Day or things like that, I have them, you know, they make gifts with their photography and then they document that. So that a lot of times they'll go find something like on Pinterest uh, or someplace like that and they'll uh, adapt those projects and then they'll write about those on Youth Voices. So I think there is a, um, I thought I just put a Youth Voices slash DIY little page together there. Can't remember the address. Um, so that's one and then my film students uh, made film equipment this year, so like they made a, a slider, they made some lights, uh, they made a boom, like a microphone boom that you hang over people to get uh, that sound that way. Stuff like that. So that's some of the making we've been doing. And then in English class, you know, we also, I guess I'm big on gifts. Uh, they do like... Uh, <laughs> graduation gifts at the end of the year, they make something for someone significant that's, you know, it's literary, it's it's um, well written, but it's also like a gift of some kind. So they package it in all kinds of different ways. Uh, yeah. So Chris, you, you said you made a Youth Voices DIY page? Um, yeah, let me just... You, as a down. mission, you mean? or? Yeah, yeah, or so I added stuff to that mission, is what I meant to say. Okay, and what, can... can I ask a question around this, so I'm going to, and then really want to have people think about it. So one of the notions that I floated back in April, and, and um, I, there is um, a link to this, is, is using making experiences as an opportunity to think about um, kids creating wikis so that, um, so that Instead of it being here, I made this picture frame, and then coming up on Youth Voices, you know, there are 20, or not 20, but there are five examples of I made this picture frame, that if those five kids could work together to say, we're making picture frames, um, this is how you might do it. So I want to just kind of ask if, if that, that makes sense to me. Does that make sense to anybody else to think about, you know, Shifting the language to a more, well, you know, open <laughs> wiki kind of language doesn't have to be neutral necessarily. Um, I'll put yeah. an example of one where I think, I mean, for instance, the personal pronoun you like is in, um, you know, there's this one. It's uh, her photo star she made, and she says, you know, like here's how you do it, right? So, mm -hmm. um, but that. I, I don't think that that wasn't on a wiki. That was just her own. Uh, right, but so so on Youth Voices there is a possibility of creating a wiki page, uh -huh. and and the difference is that um, you know I mean the difference will be kind of how we coach them to write on that page, but the other difference is that that people can write on it collaboratively, um, and keep building on that page. So, yeah. There's some idea. I, yeah, uh, I originally put it on a wiki yeah. and then like it disappeared or something. I can't quite explain I, what happened. Chris, that's because I was messing around with it. Okay. But okay. If, <laughs> <laughs> it's still all there, but um, let me see. And it, on the, on the Titan Pad, there's a link to a um, 
a post where I kind of chat about this because because the other thing is that um, it seemed to me that 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 some of that kind of thinking instead of um, everybody writing a or you know writing a report about Cuba um, <laughs> we could we could start some pages where kids are building um, some some things like that from a social studies perspective um, so let me just, I, I don't want to say a lot more I could, but I, I just want to hear what other people think about well, the, value, the, the value, value of, like, blogging is this I do this kind of thing. Not necessarily. It's also, we also do research. I don't want to say it's not just all I, but it, yeah. The value of having a, a collaborative wiki space on Youth Voices. No, or right. Go ahead. So, I mean... How do you see that playing out? Like in this girl's case where she did a photo star, is there, like someone else could say, I I did it this way, or, you know, an add to that page? Is that what you're thinking? As opposed to like a, a comment on her post or something? Yeah. Uh-huh. But probably it wouldn't be I did it. It would be probably, here's here's another option you could consider, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So it just it just feels like so I guess the big question I'm asking is what kind of writing a company's making. Um, well, can Karen, we take a look at this one? Yeah, I don't know where is it. I, um, I thought I'd put it. Let's see here. Yeah, look, I just put it in um, the Google page. How do we do this? Well, there's a link, right? Yeah, I know. Okay. And, um, I mean, I'm seeing some of this in her thing. You know, there is the I. This Mother's Day, I created this thing. Mm -hmm. Here's how to make your own star. So she links to the original idea. Uh, and finally, patience, you know. And, and then she'll say, how you do it. You know, and so she tries to say, like, do this, then do that. Then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ta-da, now you have a photo star. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, there already is some of that language built in where I'm going to help you do something that I like doing. Or, you know. Right. But it, right. But if it were a wiki, I would then go in and say, you know, on Mother's Day, you could create. You know, so that so the eye could come out of that first part okay. there. Mm -hmm. um, but then, and, and here's part of the reason. Um, it it creates for the writer a a different sense of um, you know how do you write in a way that's open for other people to co collaborate with you in the mm -hmm. future, right? And I think that's an important yeah. thing for kids to think about. That and making true. and making allows us to do that. So Karen, do you want to say out loud what you're saying in the chat? There is that because or have you thought about this? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some good models of stuff like this mm -hmm. out there in the assignment banks that we had a previous show on or even like DIY or the Instructables website where it's really an invitation and the format is to share projects and then have other people remix them or come up with their own ideas or kind of riff off of that. And I think, I mean, a wiki is a fine way to do that. I think the challenge with wikis sometimes can be just first of all organizing them and then having a structure that's mm -hmm. that's inviting for people to do and that you end up with something organized at the end. Um, but, I mean it's certainly doable. Uh -huh. When all the tornadoes were occurring earlier this spring and mm -hmm. my students are wondering about that because we hadn't been in any tornado area, but the winds are getting much stronger now through the differing weather patterns. So they wanted to know about it. So some of my students looked at the current events. Some of them looked at, well, why are there tornadoes? And some of them looked at safety. And they put together a Google site with each of those parts, and I just showed them how to do a page, and they created their page, and then they decided what the front page should look like and how they should organize it and gather the information. I mean, it's not really good because we just did it in about a week, but 
you know, it was something that they did then for the community so that they could look up facts and then all the links to where they got their information. But I, doesn't a, a Google site really is a wiki, so people could comment on it. Yeah, can, but can you put a link to that? I'd like to check that out. That's nice. <coughs> All right, I'll try to but find people, it. But <laughs> people couldn't, one, one, one essential difference is that people couldn't edit somebody else's work, right? In a group set. Um, I don't think you can. Nothing. Well, whoever's part of that, right. of the Google site could do it. But, right. yeah, so, so I don't so, know how a wiki would fit. So different. let me just, I mean, and because it is new and and, um, and nobody's used it yet, <laughs> um, yeah. but, and so I've just been experimenting, you uh, know, haven't been recently, but back in April um, was. Um, the um, So the, what a teacher or a student would do, a student could do this too, is just like you described, Sherry, they could create a mission, um, and your mission would be tornadoes. Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, Right, or or it would be uh, picture frames, or um, right, um, but and and so you'd have to think about: is this a big enough topic that there would be wikis attached to it, wiki pages attached to it? So then, what happens is um, when students create the wiki pages, they get attached to that to that mission, um, and there is a little technical stuff that has to go on around all that, but. Um, Students or anybody actually on Youth Voices, as long as you're a member of Youth Voices, can create a wiki page. Once your page is created, other people can edit it, um, and, and it goes up on the uh, feed or not the feed, but it goes up on the front page and so forth on the post, just like a, a discussion post does. And it doesn't look much different than a discussion post. It felt like that was a good thing to me. Um, so that's probably enough said. I think we. We need to experiment and see um, the value of that. It just felt to me like making was a, a good opportunity to do that. And then we've also we've heard a couple examples already. Thank you, Sherry, of other ideas that where wikis would fit better than um, a discussion post. Miss, you know, so. Well, it lends to collaboration from you know people from wherever that are part of the youth voices. If they have share the same interests, they could start that wiki and then create their information. It's much more creative for the students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And that's what you're thinking, right? Yes, They're actually exactly. making something I... that's of interest to somebody else as well as themselves. Right. Yeah. The only question is, and, and Karen and others can help me think about this as we go, like, Karen, you mentioned that getting it organized and making it accessible and all that is, is important. But we can manage to do that if, if we want to. Can we can we move on to another topic? I, I, I did want to mention that, but um, what, what else is on your mind? But actually, let me just bring Chris and Joe back. Do you guys want to talk about your AP idea? Let's... Let's explore that a little bit. Karen and I have talked since about, like, do we need Courseware? Can we just put it all up on Youth Voices? Can we, um, I don't know, use P2PU? Um, are there other ideas? So let's, can we go to that for, you know, a few and, minutes as well? Yeah, and, I'm and, curious and how do you use MakeBank or, or Missions or whatever? Go ahead, Karen. I'm curious if that fits into this wiki idea from Joe and Chris. Like, does that seem like a format that might work, because maybe we could sort of test out this wiki thing on an actual project. Mm. So let me remind you, your idea, I think, Chris, yeah, was, it was about a AP English, and you, weren't, and you were not so enamored by everybody reading the same book together and posting on Youth Voices about it, but you were more interested in, here's a list of books that are available, that are, you know, appropriate for an AP course. Um, how could we, over the next six weeks, explore these together? Is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it kind of tied together. Um, part of what my students liked about doing the Youth Voices Live this year, especially with Joe's students uh, in Oakland, was that, you know, there was this sense of the other, you know, that there are these people out there that are doing similar stuff that we are, but yet, you know, it's a different community. And so, 
that in itself was kind of interesting and engaging and motivating. Uh, and then um, there are those things that we do together. So like in this case, if you're both in AP classes um, and we both, I think, want, you know, we want students to read more than they do, I guess, or get more out of the reading, it seemed like um, that would be kind of an interesting thing, like if you had a, uh, you know, a uh, little subsection of a reading list, let's say, um, growing up or dystopian literature or something like that where, you know, there's like a, a list of maybe five books and then uh, Joe's students and my students, um, they just say like, oh, this one looks interesting, I'll read that. So those students are kind of forming a, you know, a book club of sorts um, and writing about it communicating with each other about that. I think that was kind of where uh, we got to, at least one of the things. Yeah, I figured, well, it's not as so complicated when we were talking about it before, but it's not. It's really, it's really simple. <laughs> yeah. I think so. <laughs> I think the complicated part is choosing the text. Yeah. Is what? Choosing the text? Choosing the text, I guess. Yeah. I like framing it as sort of an online book club. And, and people wouldn't even have to read the same books, but if you had sort of topic clusters, I think that would be really interesting. I mean, it'd be a rich discussion. Well, I think that's yeah, where... Oh, go ahead. Which is what real readers do yeah. when they're sharing a book. I mean, that's right. ultimately what we want and what they should be doing. And, you know, I mean, in this AP setting, um, Joe, you're talking about AP English literature? And I have, yeah, lit. I have lit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so lit is one where there actually is like this reading list. Isn't that thing, like yeah. you get a question at the end of the year and they say, you know, yep. you know, write about freedom and slavery and here's like ten books you can choose from. But you can choose so, something that's not on the list. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this added benefit in a case like that where students are actually like helping each other because I can't possibly read all the things that are on my list, but if I listen to other people talk about their stuff, that actually, I mean, in a self-serving way, that just helps me for an AP test, but I think in a larger way, that helps me understand the world more. Absolutely. Yep, I agree. Resourceful, not self-serving. Yeah, that's what I meant. Totally. So um, here's how here's how I want to push the two of you and think about uh -oh. what we need, right? Is it's like how could like I can totally imagine the two of you getting your classes together and, and doing this, right? Mm -hmm. But how could we create a space, probably on youth voices, at least beginning on youth voices, um, where others might want to sign up and say, Ooh, we'd like to do that with you. And it does feel like, and learning from CL MOOC, how could it be fun? How could it be engaging? How could it be, but also how could it be, um, how could there be a team of people end up doing this instead of, you know, that, those are some of the things I think we've learned from CL MOOC. So that, and, and so that the students become part of that team. You know, the way your student, Chris, took over the, the um, you know the the what is this up the the, the, the hangouts that, that, that your classes were doing mm -hmm. um, so that they're contributing ideas to it it's not just okay here are the books read these books you know that, so my question was what do you need to make that happen well where it breaks down is like you know if if everybody just does their own discussion and that's where like well do I respond to Judy or John because they just both wrote about their eyes were watching God and um, you know so like that's where I see what you're getting at Paul with like if everybody does discussions the uh, you know it gets diluted the conversation I think mm -hmm. um, so if there was some kind of communal page to house or some kind of hub for that discussion um, it might make it easier to participate that in that, you know, for people who are coming at it from the outside. So if I'm a new teacher and I'm just wandering in here, 
it would be really difficult for me to track down ten different discussion posts about their eyes were watching God, but you know, if there's one page that's kind of a splash page or a wiki or whatever, that's somehow either, you know, maybe student curated, maybe it's just a list of links, um, that might make it easier to get into that. Mm-hmm. So, is there like a big question that they're thinking about? Because it's similar topic books. And maybe in their discussion, they're thinking of ways to share it that's related to their lives. Like this week in CL MOOC, we're doing memes. They could do character memes. You know, so it wouldn't just be a conversation, but they would be able to express their learning or their impressions of that big idea in not just writing, but maybe in some other ways. Yeah, I guess that, uh, without being... Sometimes I've killed these things, too, being <laughs> super scripted, you know? Um, and um, right. so it's like, uh, you know, how is this book relevant to your life is maybe too wide open, but that seems to be pretty good. Um, for a lot of the books that we read, and it's just kind of, I tell them, you know, the, the, the question isn't, is this book relevant to you, but it's like, how is this relevant to your life? And then some interesting things come out as they bring the text into their own experience. But And and Joe, you're, you did some work around, I forget which play it was, but your kids uh-huh. did making around a play, right, this year? Yeah, that's what I was going to, um, oh, yeah, so I'll talk about that, and then I just had a comment to the, mm-hmm. um, to Sherry's comment that spoke to me. Um, so they did props out of uh, crap, recycled crap. They had to do props from the play, so they were given um, an assignment of a prop that is like a symbol from one of, we did Othello and we did Hamlet. And then they had to make the prop in two class periods and it was all out of recycled material. So I mean we had kids that didn't bring anything that day they were supposed to and ran outside for 10 minutes picking up garbage on the campus to use as part of their as their material. So that's what we did in terms of like making and then they posted a lot of different kids posted what they did Mm -hmm. um, in the assignment. Um, That was cool but in terms of the what was speaking to me from Sherry's comment, oh go ahead Paul. No, no, go ahead. You go ahead. I was going to say that, you know, I was saying earlier, our kids follow these pathways, which are the academy link learning um, type of, you know, industry pathways. And so I teach in the architecture academy, and I have, a, you know, I teach some of my AP kids will be in the media academy, and some of my AP kids would be in the law and public service academy. If there was something where they were making something, an expression of, what they're reading about, like everybody is making, oh, I don't know, create something that represents the character's conflict, the main character's conflict from the novel you've chosen. Like, I feel like, because I'm wondering what the products are going to be if we're doing, if we're talking about a short, like, kind of six-week collabo between us. Um, that are very, because our kids are very, like, design-oriented, like, that's the part of their academy pathway is that they're, like the media kids create media, the architecture kids design prototypes and build them. Um, and the law and public service kids, I don't know, they read a lot, <laughs> they study a lot, I don't know. Um, they build, you know, they do mock trials, they create cases. So, yeah, I don't know if there was a way that, because that's, I'm trying to think of a link between just my own students in the class given that they come from these what what can feel like different schools sometimes because they've taken these different pathway courses. I bet you could integrate all that into maker projects and I like the idea of having like different options so you know if we had something like a a bank of these and some kids could do media and then they could riff off of it. Go ahead Sherry. I was just thinking if they were in you know architect or what what house kind of house would that main character build? Yeah. yeah. You know, things like that. I mean, and then they'd have to explain it, you know, based on the theme of the book and the character. That would be fun. 
And, and those pathways could come from the school they're in or, or could come from their own interests or curiosities, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where would those assignments live? <laughs> I want to get real here because, again, I know. You know, I, we, how do we get this started? I mean, that could be a page on the it. wiki. Mm -hmm. If the wiki was organized where there was kind of whatever the framing groups are and then, you know, projects could be part of it and links to posts could be part of it. I mean, we could sort of frame it out. But, I mean, the nice thing about the wiki is you can pretty much accommodate anything. At least we could try it out and see how it worked. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. What are you thinking, Chris? <laughs> right. uh, so, uh, what about what about time wise and getting people signed up? Like that that's not a small matter. I mean, uh -uh. getting people to commit. I'm going to do this during these six weeks is important because that's what makes the you know that's what makes the community right. So, how does CL MOOC do that? I mean, you guys send out notices, right? Well, and people sign up. Yeah, I mean, it's easier the second year because people kind of have heard of it, and it was it was easier than other MOOCs I've done because there's the writing project community, and mm -hmm. and we end, I mean, it ended up a lot of other people pulled into it, but that was a core. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say, like, getting the word out, especially for student projects, like setting some dates and just a general description and getting that out sooner so that people could plan. I think a lot of people would be really interested in it. But, it, you know, I mean, you guys know, you can't say, we're doing this next week and think people are going to be able to do that. So I don't know. I'm curious what your time frame would be, Chris and Joe. Well, I'm pretty flexible. You know, like, I have parts that I plug in and sometimes I plug them in at different times of the year. So like for instance, Shakespeare, back to him. Um, when do you teach that, Joe? Um, I teach Shakespeare in the spring. Yeah, so I will plan on doing Shakespeare in the spring. And so we can make props uh, and teach each other about different Shakespeare plays. So like my kids will be doing The Tempest and yours will be doing maybe Othello and Hamlet again, I'm not sure. We'll see, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so like it's even better that they do different ones. And so we, we slot it in. When you say spring, are you thinking like March? I'm thinking mid-February to mid-March. Okay, so that works for me. So there's one. So, yeah, we, should, we should say hello to Terry, by the way. Uh, Terry Ellen, welcome. What's on your mind, Terry? Oh, I just saw the I just saw the teaser that said summer, and I said okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw that there were lots of cool people. So so yeah. So I, the general thing, the general thing that we could move out to. I mean, I, we could keep planning in more detail if we want to. But um, I so is uh, is how I I mean this is my question at least. How can we learn from CL MOOC and and what you? what's been going on in the summer to, to pull some of that into creating MOOCs for young people so that um, on Youth Voices there's more coordination between teachers and students. So it's not just hit and miss. You do Shakespeare in the fall, I do it in the spring. <laughs> um, so that's some of the thinking. Is there anything else, Vanessa, jump back in here too, um, that you think we should think about? Oh. Project. It's sound. You know, I'm very. I'm. I'm new to this project. Mm -hmm. um, so it's. Um, I think the integrating the sort of getting the CL MOOC sounds good, and but you, we probably need some fairly specific guidelines on what what you need. Instead of it, it probably needs to be a little more specific than go forth and make something, whatever. Uh huh. Maybe if you if you had if you were do are you if you had sort of like some samples some sample top and say mm -hmm. how how would you make what what would you make for this? Well, that is indeed what the Make Bank is. The Make Bank cycle starts out with an introduction of you know what it is 
um, how you could do it, possibilities, how you could organize yourselves, and um, you know that kind of sets it up, and then let the kids discuss, you know, get into the books, and then start discussing what that would look like if they were trying to deliver a message to someone else, and they're all into social media. They, I'm sure, they'd come up with something. Mm -hmm. So a wiki could be like a Facebook page, you know. So throw them some bait and see what they bite at or throw back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm into not reproducing things that are already existing. So how could we, Karen? I noticed your comment here, but so how could we use the make banks that already exist for some of this? Yeah, I mean, so there's definitely a lot of makes in our make bank already that could be pretty easily adapted to this because they're pretty general. Um, but the other thing that could be done, and, you know, we've talked before about sort of how many platforms do you want to spread this and get across, and there's yeah. pros and cons to that. But we could set up a category in the existing make bank that would be, you know, I don't know what it is, the Shakespeare Book Club or, whatever, you know, whatever the project is, and that would be a place to sort of organize that. Or we could just reproduce the idea on a wiki page, and then we could say, you know, here's here's 20 makes and just link to them that might fit and pick what you want to do. Or or a teacher could say, you know, here's three makes that I want you to do. Or I mean, it it could be flexible, but basically, there's kind of a database of a bunch of stuff that I think is applicable. Mm -hmm. So. Can I? You guys mentioned Shakespeare. Is that different than the AP course, or is that a subset of the AP course? Uh, we just I teach a unit on drama, and Shakespeare's it for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Usually. I just. Yeah, I just. Right. So those might be those might be two different MOOC experiences: AP literature and Shakespeare. Is that right? No, I teach the Shakespeare and the AP lit course. I know, but but if you have a six week, I'm just trying to think about how to make this a little bit you know, clear. Right. So it's worth thinking about. Terry, I, can I just I, when I th when I see you, I also think of annotation, and, and can I at least bring this up? Um, the um, and and I, I know we're shifting, but I looked up at the clock and thought, you know, there's one more thing I want to talk about. You know, I'm kind of, I, you know, I've, I've, um, one of the things that I would love to see happening more on Youth Voices, one way that that we could collaborate more, and, and may, you know, whenever we say Youth Voices, we mean a community of, of young people working together and teachers working together, right? Um, is is doing close reading more um, and doing it together. Um, so one of the, and so that there are conversations that are connected to texts. Um, and, um, you know, we, we've, uh, for a couple of years now, played with Crocodoc, and that's worked in my own classes, but it's never gone kind of beyond that to, to you know, outside of my own classes. So when I sign it, say, do this, it works. But um, I'm, I've also been looking at now comment as well, um, and um, it's got a lot of features that I think are, more interesting in some way than, than the way Crocodoc works. But so, yeah, I don't know if it's fun enough to be called a MOOC, but I'm wondering if there could be a, um, a reading experience. Like, here's, here's a, I don't know how this would work. So what's my question? How could we get more kids reading the same text together? <laughs> across youth voices. Does that make any sense to anybody? So is it just lack of familiarity with the tools or yeah, that's um, coordinating or what? Yeah, go ahead, Terry. Jump you in. know, it's, uh, to me it all comes down to friction, you know, kind of cognitive friction as to how much you're willing to tolerate. Like, I mean, there's lots of ways... Uh, uh, Chris Weinberg talks about the internet as being uh, small tools loosely joined, mm -hmm. and in a way, that's what CL MOOC is. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of small tools loosely joined together. We've got tweet chats, we've got 
G+, there's a Facebook community, there's blog aggregator, you know, and it's not, I mean, and we've got a WordPress blog that Karen's worked so hard on, and it's just, it's not one thing. So, I mean, just to throw something out, is, I mean, my, my favorite tool right now, the one I love the most, is a tool that's from Columbia called uh, Vialogs, and it's the only tool I am aware of that allows you to just grab almost any video, stick it in there, even videos that you create yourself, um, and then it allows you to have a threaded discussion about what that, what that video is. So you could have somebody doing uh, a reading and then have students discuss closely what that reading means. And you can embed questions in if you want to, and you can do all kinds of teacherly crap, or you can just get out of the way and let them do it. Or you can create a, like a, a video on Explain Everything or a similar tool and do your own close reading like I've done to show students, uh, you know, what does it mean to closely read? You know, okay, ask a question, respond, say WTF or, or LOL or underline something, you know, um, to let them know that it's not that, I mean, the initial take of a close reading is not that difficult. Um, and then, you know, as you do this, find out what works and what doesn't. Um, I so, don't know. If I, I, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. So could we do could we do a ma uh, a move that would be fun enough, engaging enough that's called close reading? You know, <laughs> I mean, and and the way it would work is if kids were you know were reading stuff that they cared about, were passionate about, right? I mean, and not just assigned in some way. But I mean, isn't that yeah. side rap? What's that side rap genius? Yeah. There's it does that. That, essentially that, that is we talk about not recreating it. Just go there, and within that, they've got poetry, poetry genius, where people submit their own poetry, and then they get you know it's 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 already got um, a box around it with all kinds of cool stuff on it. Uh, you might look at that and see see yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. By by the way, one of the things that's nice about now comment is um, that if if you copy and paste a um, uh, a video that's already embedded somewhere that goes in too, and you can actually have comments around that video too. Although you know, not as not as detailed as uh, as Vialogs does, but we're saying. Um, okay, we're out of time, but <laughs> I, I did want to get that thought in there. Um, so. <laughs> and let me just say, my 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 last thought on this is is something about. Can we use so here? Look, what's what's amazing about CL MOOC is is like the design and and what you guys are doing is 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 fascinating. I'm always interested also though in um, when we use that stuff to actually teach um, content, right? So so it it. So so far, so far, the CL MOOC part of what's wonderful about it is that there isn't a specific content that you have to get to. Yet, you know, I want kids to learn how to close read. So, how can I use what I'm learning by watching you guys and participating every once in a while in CL MOOC um, to teach close reading, to teach Shakespeare, to teach AP literature? Um, you know, so that's where I'm going to end my question here tonight, <laughs> and. Can we go around and just hear what you're thinking at this point? Um, and I'm just going to go across the board, if you don't mind. Um, Vanessa. Okay. Wait, I was over looking at the links on uh, there's other other literature over on Rap Genius. There's a Joyce section, by the way, if you, anybody's going to put Joyce on your AP yeah. students. Um, but um, This will, okay, can you re-ask me the question? I'm just asking what, what's up. We, we just, we just uh, like to say what's on your mind here at the end. Yeah, well, I was over on another page getting a link to put here, so it was, my, my mind cool. was wandering. Um, I, I can't Vanessa, well, I took one look at you, and I knew you'd be on Rap Genius immediately. I, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, was, I was looking at, the, when you were talking about the Shakespeare, I was thinking the one thing that I've, uh, I had found students 
made it more interesting for them was looking at 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 uh, the movies of different staging, and and the uh, Royal Shakespeare website has some very good education on on different stagings of some of the Shakespeare plays, mm -hmm. which shows the sets and the costumes. But for them to get a sense of how different the staging and the presentation can be, that it's not always the same play. Okay. Great. We found this. We, we discovered this by accident one one time when I scheduled a uh, a film night for for Hamlet, and the uh, media people mixed up the tape boxes, and we watched the first half was Olivier, and then I put in the second tape, and we had Richard Chamberlain in the graveyard, <laughs> and, and we, we we got a good laugh out of that. But but it turned into a really good teachable moment. Of course, they said, "Look at that hair," because it was some like sixties hair. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, Lots of topics coming up. Vanessa, I, I just want to get through everybody. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Terry, what are you thinking? Um, just finished reading a post about uh, by John Udell about trailing edge technologies and how simple is simpler is better. And I'm thinking more, in, and, you know, CL MOOC, I think, has, has really brought that home to me this week when we're talking about memes. And memes as just kind of this low fidelity, low bar to entry tool that really is, it's like in any complex system, little things lead to great complexity. So That's that and right. internet relay chat, I got to figure out a way to put that in there. <laughs> Sherry. Hear me. Yep, I'm excited to hear what they figure out for their AP class. Make <laughs> it into it. And at Youth Voices, what are we going to do? Make it more MOOC-like. Sounds good. Cool. Karen? I, you know, I'm, I'm interested in this sort of teaching content, and I think one of the things that makes CL MOOC really work is we, we are teaching content. It's the connected learning content, but it, it's such a fit with a really flexible, hands-on, fun design. And, I, you know, I've worked on other MOOCs where I've tried to take the magic of CL MOOC and transform it to things that just don't lend themselves as well to that. And I, I think that's worth thinking about when we think of Youth Voices projects. And, you know, to some extent, if you take a project like Shakespeare and you say, this is what we're all doing and we're doing it on a timeline, you've taken some of the choice out of it. And I think, you know, it's it, there's ways to make it work with brilliant instructional design and smart people and but I think definitely some things lend themselves more to that than others um, Jeff? um I have no I, I'm excited to figure out what Sherry's so excited to see <laughs> for this year as I don't yeah Chris and I, I don't know. <laughs> it'll be great whatever it is yeah. Our kids will be awesome. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Paul. No, day. no, that's all right. That's cool. I thank you for joining us again tonight. And Chris, you get last yeah. word. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think it'll be great too. Uh, what we come up with. Um, but I, I understand the thing about you know you can you can kill it and if you try to prescribe too much. But, um, you know, I have students read, and we'll just stay with Shakespeare. There's a lot of other things we could do, but we'll stay with Shakespeare. I have them read Shakespeare just because I think I just love the language, and I want them to deal with it and work with it and all that stuff. And, and I think there's that added value of connecting with people who are also, you know, you're in high school, you know, there's worse things you could do, but, you know, kids, we're reading Shakespeare. And, um, you know, like, let's appreciate it and let's see how it connects to people in, in their lives and, and these people who we don't even know whose experience is so different than ours, you know, Salt Lake and Oakland. Um, and I think interesting things can happen there. And, and so I think we've made progress because I remember this year just thinking, like, um, darn, I wish I would have known that Joe was doing that uh, prop thing because we, you know, like two weeks earlier had, you know, started Shakespeare. And so there is this idea of making the curriculum more visible and more connected that I think will add value to it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be good. Have fun in Ireland. Oh, yeah, I, I'll try. 
Okay. And um, and thank you for uh, setting up next week's show for us. Um, can you just mention again who's um, what's what's yeah. happening? Yeah. Authors of Invent to Learn. That's Sylvia Martinez and Gary Steger. Uh, Invent to Learn, uh, and the subtitle is Making Tinkering and Engineering in the Classroom. So they'll join us next week to talk about their book. And and or we'll talk about it. Uh, yes. Yeah, or it may <laughs> just be us talking about it. But that's okay. We can yeah. do that. So yeah. Yeah, grab the book and um, and I you mean and join us. Um, and uh, we're here every Wednesday. We're saying um, uh, over the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network that Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier set up. Um, so thank you all. Good night. Um, we're saying good night to a pirate. And Arr. 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 I mean. all right. <laughs> Thank you all. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thank you.